Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to continue with part two on how to build this uh, improved and much more powerful uh, static grass applicator. So, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click all. Now, before we actually do get started, there are a couple of things that I wanted to follow up on that came out of the out of comments from the first uh, video, and uh, also to uh, give you a heads up on uh, a parts list and things like that. Now, first of all, uh, one of the uh, viewers here, uh, Ted, and I think he's probably pronounced Amron, but sorry, Ted, if that's not pronounced correctly. Ted sent me some information that he had gotten uh, from a company that actually makes these uh, uh, static grass applicators commercially. And they told him that one way to greatly increase the efficiency of this design was to place the uh, positive uh, screen or power source uh, behind the static grass up at the top here instead of by wiring it directly to this screen. That creates a static electric field that will uh, you know, encompass all of the static grass that you have in the container as it flows out and uh, supposedly greatly increases the efficiency of the design. So what I'll be doing, I didn't have time to incorporate that over the weekend uh, for this video coming up, but what I will do is in the next week I will go ahead and do that and then we'll do a head-to-head -head test. We'll, you know, cover an area with the static grass using this one and then I'll go ahead, make the change, move the uh, positive uh, power supply to the back or the top or wherever you, you think it is. Uh, and then we'll test it, you know, same conditions, same design, everything except moving the uh, source of the positive charge to the rear here. And then we'll give that a test. So that will be next Monday, okay? So come on back and watch that uh, before you decide how you're going to build yours or before you start building yours. Okay, so again, I want to thank Ted for that, and I appreciate him uh, providing me with that information. Uh, now, another thing, as far as a parts list and wiring diagram, I've already gotten one comment from an individual wanting to know the part number for the negative ion generator. And let me point out, I got it off of eBay, and there are hundreds of these for sale on eBay, most of them coming from China. So, um, there are ones that have two wires in and two wires out. There are ones with two wires in and one wire out, two wires in and lots of wires out. I decided to use the one that has two in and two out. They're red and black, you know, positive and negative. Uh, so it greatly simplifies everything, no confusion. So that's the one that I went with. All you have to do is do a search on eBay for negative ion generator and, you know, hundreds of these will come up and just pick the one that uh, is the lowest price and looks like the one that, uh, that I used. I will go ahead and include specific information for the vendor that I got mine from in China. I can't guarantee you that he will be selling that same uh, ion generator a week from now, much less a year from now. So, you know, if you go on eBay and you can't find the specific one that I used, do a search. Just look for negative ion generator and, you know, look through, the, uh, look through the photos and compare it to the one that I showed uh, in the video, okay? And pick out one because, you know, this is not rocket science. There's a lot of different varieties, but pick one with two wires in, two wires out. It will greatly simplify your life. Now, as far as a parts list, I will have a complete uh, parts list in the description for this video. So go there and look it up. Okay, and get the parts list from that. That's the easiest thing to do. Uh, unfortunately, there is no way for me to load a wiring diagram to the description or anywhere else on YouTube that I can find. So I'm going to have to set up a website. Unfortunately, I know how to set up a free website where I can place uh, the file to be uh, downloaded. However, what I can do right now is I'm going to hold up 
uh, a copy, a hand-drawn uh, copy of my wiring diagram. And, you know, you can stop your, your video right there, do a screen capture, and then print it out. And that way you can just, you know, go right with the uh, wiring diagram. I will, though, you know, like I said, I will find a way to post a file containing, you know, a cleaned up version of this diagram for you. So here it goes. Hopefully it's not going to blow it out because it's on white paper. Okay, that should be enough for you to go ahead and uh, print that out. Let me also point out that in Luke Towen's diagram for the original version of this uh, Staticgress applicator, he provided a file on his website where you can, that you can download, and it has the wiring diagram. And, you know, all I did was use the 9-volt uh, portion of the diagram, okay? Matter of fact, and you can even eliminate the LED. You can just use the on-off switch, the power supply, and the static uh, and the um, negative ion generator and greatly simplify the design. You don't even need that uh, LED. The main reason he had the, the LEDs in his diagram is to show you whether the 9 volt or the 12 volt power supply was active. And I will put another link to Luke Towen's video at the end of this one. So please, if you want that, go to the end of the video and watch that and, and link to his and go ahead and watch that and get the information there. Finally, if you're comfortable with electrical wiring and soldering and all of that, uh, that's mainly what I'm going to be doing uh, during uh, most of this video. So if you uh, want to, you can go ahead and skip forward to somewhere around the 17 minute mark. I'm not exactly sure because I don't know how long this introduction is going to be. But if you go ahead and skip to that, uh, you can catch that portion of the video where I show the uh, device being used and the results uh, when applying six millimeter uh, static grass to a uh, test surface. And you can get an idea whether you think it's worth your time and an effort to go ahead and try to build one of these things, if it's gonna work for you. Okay, with that introduction, let's go ahead and get started. We'll pick up uh, right where we left off on Friday with uh, the construction of the uh, uh, static grass applicator. I uh, went ahead and let this sit overnight because it just was still a little bit tacky and sticky after a few hours. And at this point now, it's good and hard. This sucker is on here good and tight. And, you know, I've got it all ready to go. So, um, for the future, uh, what I would do is go ahead and install all of the electronics first after you've made the initial cut uh, that I showed you. And then... Once you've installed all the electronic components, then go ahead and uh, add the uh, storage container here on the end uh, because it'll just make uh, soldering and, and installation a lot easier because you'll be able to work from the open end here. I, I was really intent on making sure that this was going to work, uh, the installation method that I, I came up with, and that the epoxy was going to hold it firmly. And now that I've established that, I'd feel very comfortable going ahead, doing the electronic work first, and then installing the little container here, the Rubbermaid storage container, on the end. Okay, I think I've got everything we're going to need laid out here. Now, let me show you what I've done here. I took a fairly long Phillips head screw. This is about oh, a little over an inch, maybe inch and a half. And I drilled a hole and just inserted it right here uh, in the uh, one end of the device. And what that's going to do is it's going to stick down far enough that it's going to prevent this guy from moving forward. And then I'm going, once I uh, install this, I'm going to put another one here and that's going to pin it in so it's not going to move around. So that's going to stabilize that. Then we're going to uh, make the connections to the push button switch and uh, to the LED here. Okay, and um, to our battery. Now the, the wiring on this has to be kind of long because you still have to be able to get this battery out to replace it. So, but there's plenty of room inside of here to tuck lots of extra wires. So I'm not concerned about that either. So let's go ahead and wire this all up and get it ready to go. So then I'm gonna put this aside. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna run this black wire 
and we want to attach it to one of the legs on our push button switch. So that's fairly straightforward to do. Get my soldering iron ready. And I'm going to just pre-tin everything here in sight. This needs to be wired into the black. I've already put a piece of heat shrink tubing here. And I'm going to pull my heat shrink on top of that to protect it. Now, the other end of this is going to go to our battery. So let me go ahead and drop that into place here. Matter of fact, I can clip this back just a little bit now. And we got to make sure we've got our heat shrink tubing on it. So you can see I've got the uh, contacts here to our push button switch so that we're going to have a direct line of contact from the negative uh, power supply lead. Now that we've got that set up, let's go ahead and make the connection here to the, uh, to the LED. And I'm going to want to put a, uh, I'm going to use a 1000 ohm resistor here since I'm only dealing with a 9 volt battery. So let me cut these leads back a bit. And I'm going to snip this guy back. Now remember that uh, on an LED, the longer leg is the positive uh, side of the, it's the positive uh, contact. So I'm going to cut that back so that I can make my connection here for my resistor. Okay. So now let's just go ahead and pretend this. And I'm going to hold this guy with my tweezers while I tin him. And we're going to need a little piece of heat shrink tubing on this leg too to protect it. I'm going to use my uh, hemostats to hold that guy in place while I do the soldering. We can then go ahead and slide the heat shrink over the resistor and into place here. And I'm bending these at a slight angle because I'm going to have to feed them through the uh, outside case of the device. Okay, so that's my resistor to protect that side and let's go ahead. We're going to need this one as well. So let's go ahead and cut it back a little bit. There. And again, let's clip it so we can hold it. The resistor side I'm going to attach to the red wire, so this has to get a black wire lead attached to it. So I've got my, uh, this is 20 gauge wire I'm going to be using. So now let's go ahead and solder the uh, black wire. Need to tin it first. And we'll and, uh, solder it right here to the uh, negative lead. And get another piece of heat shrink tubing. Protect that from shorts. And it also is going to, you know, give it a little bit more rigidity and support. Go ahead and 
tin this guy while I've got it here. Okay. Now I'm going to slide the uh, piece of heat shrink tubing on and run it right on down. So hopefully everything is going to be protected now against any unexpected shorts that uh, might come our way. So now that's ready to go in. I need to add a red wire here. Pretend the red wire leads. And now we can make this final connection here. And another piece of heat shrink tubing for that connection. And we'll shrink that down into place. I'm going to go ahead and test my connection here on my LED and make sure it lights up with the uh, 9 volt. And it is lighting up. I can see it. You probably won't be able to because of all the light here. But it is working. Okay, so wanted to make sure about that. Now at this point, I want to go ahead and install the LED. So I'm going to have the push button right here. So let's put the LED right there so it'll be plainly visible. And uh, I need to get that in now so that I can do the wiring before I insert everything else. So I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole right here on the left hand side of this screw. Okay, before I in, uh, try and insert the LED, I'm going to clean it out just a bit here on the inside. Get rid of any of this flash that was left. Okay, just a nice sharp knife. Now I'm going to insert the uh, LED assembly that we've just put together in here. And feed it back towards the open end. And then we're going to push that in, down into place here. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, that finally popped down into place. So we'll have the LED here, push button here. And you can see I've got the wires coming out this end so I can do my soldering. Okay, I apologize. Uh, I just recorded a clip, or I thought I was recording it, but unfortunately, uh, although I pushed the record button, it did not take. So I've already made this connection here. Let me tell you what I did, uh, because I'm not going to go back and take it apart and redo it. Basically, this is the black wire coming from the LED and the black wire from the negative ion generator. And I've just connected them here to one contact on the push button switch. Now the next step is to make the connection uh, to the battery lead for that as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And I can see now that it's recording, so I feel comfortable to proceed. So I've got that. Let's take and put a piece of heat shrink tubing over the wire and make that connect to the switch. And we'll push this piece of heat shrink tubing into place and shrink it down. Okay, so that gives us a connection to our battery going from here to the switch. When you push the switch, it's going to feed power to the negative ion generator and to the LED. The LED will only come on once that switch switch is pushed down, which is what we want. Okay, at this point, we want to make a connection uh, of all the red wires. 
because we got one red wire that comes from the battery and goes directly to the LED, which is right here. I've made that connection. And then this is the red wire that goes to the negative ion generator. So let's make uh, a connection between all three of those wires. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull the heat shrink tubing into place over this solder connection we just made. And get that on there far enough so that it will protect the joint. And as I've said in the past, this heat shrink tubing that I use is, I believe, polyolefin, not PVC. And you can rub it with the tip of a soldering iron in order to shrink it. If you do that with PVC, it will melt and uh, you'll regret it. Okay, I've got everything put together now. All the uh, wires for the power supply, the negative ion generator, the switch, the LED. So what I've got to do now is get this switch down into here and fish it up into this hole. So I need to fish this down in here on the left hand side like this, pushing everything as we go ahead of it. Because remember, these fat wires are the ones that need to go in first. So I need to make sure I get that. And it's like dealing with wiggle worms there. And then the push button goes in. And the negative ion generator and all these other wires. So I've got that managed to get that all packed in there. In fact, I'm just going to push it all up here. Get it up out of the way. Let's go ahead and pull some of these other wires out. That's going to be our ground wire connection. So I'm going to pull that out here. Okay. And the red wire is going to be going into here. So let me take the cover off and we'll try to work that. Okay. So there's the red wire inside here where it needs to be. The black wire will come out this side. Well, I managed to get everything crammed in here. So I've got my on off switch and everything uh, working now. And what I wanted to show you was how I made this connection here because it's a very simple uh, arrangement. You can't solder to aluminum. So what I did was I just stripped some of the insulation off of this uh, red positive wire and uh, splayed out the, uh, the individual wires and ran them through the openings in the uh, screen here and brought them through here and just soldered them together here on this side. So there's a good strong connection here with the uh, aluminum screen. And as you can see, I've dumped a bunch of uh, six millimeter um, static grass in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And we can take a look. Um, I did go ahead, this is the black negative wire from the negative ion generator. Uh, and you know I've got that connected with an alligator clip so that I can stick that into whatever surface I'm going to be applying to. Here, you can see it's a simple matter, the uh, nine volt battery installed in here, and the cap is just a friction fit on the end. What I want to do is I've got a little piece of cardboard here, and I'm going to take some uh, glue, and we'll just smear that down here, and use that to test how well this applicator works. And I'm just going to take this uh, pin and push it into the glue. Okay, and um, let me go ahead and get ready here. Um, so when I turn this on, I'm going to flip it over and we'll start sifting out some static grass and see how well it does. I think I need to put some more static grass in here. I'm running low already. And I'll point out, this is uh, 
Natch Static Grass Summer Blend 6 millimeter. So it's, you know, fairly good sized static grass. Okay. Oops. Okay, I think that's enough now. So let's go ahead and disconnect this guy and ground it to make sure nothing's there. Okay, so let's take a look. This is the uh, static grass surface. So you can see we've got that six millimeter static grass standing up nice and tall and straight. So I think this is a great improvement over the previous uh, design. Uh, as you can see, we've got our push button here. The LED is here. I'll be doing some uh, more videos now that I have this more powerful uh, unit, and we'll take a look at, at uh, ways of using the uh, static grass applicator on your layout. I also want to try making my own buffalo grass tufts and those kind of things using this and see how that works as well. Well, that's a wrap on this one. Um, I'm kind of happy with the way this turned out, you know. It's not pretty, but it doesn't have to be to get the job done. It's still providing a, a powerful electrostatic field and getting that uh, six millimeter grass to stand up very straight and tall. Uh, plus, with the larger diameter here of the screen, you know, it, it comes out a lot faster. So I'm getting a much nicer uh, coverage uh, with that six millimeter grass. So, as I said, we'll be trying some more things in future videos with this, and come on back uh, on Friday for another video from the DCC Guide. In the meantime, have a good week, and take care. Bye now.